So what does it mean to be a follower of Jesus? Well, in ancient Israel, a disciple was a student of or a follower of a rabbi, their spiritual leader. And the job of the disciple was to spend time with the rabbi to observe the rabbi, to observe their behavior, their demeanor, to understand by asking questions and seeking out their knowledge. The ultimate goal of a disciple was to imitate what they learned about their rabbi. In fact, if a student did well enough in learning from their rabbi and then applying those truths to their lives, they had a term for them. They would be known as the rabbi's shadow. Now, you've come to follow Christ. And you may be asking, what does the Lord want from me now that I'm a follower of Jesus? I can tell you it's very simple. Jesus calls us to be his disciple. He's our rabbi. And he wants us to spend time with him. He wants you to observe him, to learn his convictions, his belief systems, and let them be applied to yours. For you to see his mission in his heart, apply that to yours, with the ultimate goal of imitating the Lord Jesus to the extent that you become the shadow of Jesus on this earth right now. In fact, uh, the term Christian literally means little Christ. God has called us to be little Christ, to be the shadow of Jesus on the earth. So what I wanna do is take just a few moments to share three basic truths as a foundational truths, as you develop that intimacy with the Lord, and learn from Him, this foundation you can build your life upon as you grow in this journey to become the shadow of Jesus on the earth. The first basic truth I want you to think about is this, the Trinity. We believe in the divine Trinity of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Who are they? Well, the Father, of course, is God. Well, oftentimes when you're reading the Bible, you'll read about God the Father. In fact, Father is the favorite term Jesus used when he referenced God. Then we have to look at the Son, Jesus Christ. And then the Holy Spirit, where God is represented to us by his Spirit, his presence with us, and as a believer, in us. These are the three expressions of God. One God who expresses himself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You can think of it this way. Uh, when Jesus was on the earth, God the Father was dwelling from the heavenly throne. God the Son came, was born of a virgin, lived a sinless life, died upon the cross, rose from the grave to give you eternal life, then ascended to the right hand of the Father where the book of Hebrews says, right now he is interceding on your behalf. And the Holy Spirit came down from the throne to feel and indwell every one of us who call upon the name of the Lord. So now the presence of God literally is inside you. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit of God. So if as we understand the Trinity, God is with us. So we pray to the Father in the name of the Son and we are filled and indwelt with the power of the Holy Spirit. That's one basic truth. A second basic truth is we've been given access into the very throne room of God by the gift of prayer. So let's talk about this gift of prayer for just a moment. Hebrews chapter four, verse 16 says, now let us, as we've come to faith in Christ, let us come boldly before the throne of grace so that we can obtain mercy and find grace and help in our time of need. In your life, you have an open door into the presence of God. You've been adopted by Christ as now a child of the King. And God has opened up the throne room and says any moment of any time of any day, you have the right to come into his presence through the gift of prayer. You can speak directly to him. You can talk to the Lord and then be silent before the Lord and allow him to speak back to you. God will speak back to you through his word. God will speak back to you through his Holy Spirit. He may even speak to you by the, using others to speak to you. And anytime you have a need, now you can ask. 
as you grow to become the shadow of your rabbi, the Lord Jesus, understand who he is, the son of God. Understand the gift you've been given, the gift of prayer, that you can converse and talk with God at any moment of any time. Jesus said it this way, ask and it will be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be open to you. Prayer is our greatest privilege. The half-brother of Jesus on the earth through his mother Mary, James, wrote in the scriptures, you have not because you ask not. And sometimes we, we just simply don't ask, but then he went on to say, sometimes we just ask from selfish motives. But Jesus taught the disciples to pray, and when we pray, we're to pray, the kingdom of the Lord come and the will of God to be done. And when we pray that way, we're assured that God will hear our prayers. Lord, your kingdom come. Lord, here's my desire. Your will be done. Now, this third little truth that I want to share with you as you build your foundation is this. The Bible. Take the Bible as the manual that God has given you, these scriptures to grow in knowledge of him, to learn from him. When you read the scriptures, it's like sitting at the feet of your rabbi. When you're praying, you're talking to your rabbi. When you read the scriptures, you're allowing the, the rabbi to talk back to you. You're learning how he operates, his heart, his passion, his desire. When you study the scriptures, listen to this. We believe that the Bible is God's word. It is reliable, it is relevant, and it is inspired. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 says it this way, all the scriptures are given by inspiration of God they are profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. Or in other words, we can learn from the scriptures how to live our lives and look more like Jesus. The Bible is a literary masterpiece written over a 1500 year period by more than 40 different authors. Yet from Genesis to Revelation, there is one problem, sin. There's one villain, the devil, Satan. There's one solution, redemption. There's one savior, Jesus Christ. The apostle Peter wrote about the men of God who pinned down the words of scripture. Here's how he described them. These were holy men of God who spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. God speaks to us through his word. So our challenge is we need to get into this word daily. We need to sit at the feet of Jesus on a daily basis and let him speak to us through his word. Now, there are many ways you can get into the word. Uh, daily Bible reading plans. We have those resources at Connection Point Church and on our media outlets. You can also find great Christian books and Bible studies. You can purchase those or you can go online. There are many wonderful online Bible apps and websites that can help you become a student of the scriptures. Another great way is to listen to Bible sermons, sermons off of books of the Bible or topics out of the scriptures and you take uh, a keep a journal, take notes, study the scriptures. Let God speak to you. So remember, here are three basic truths as a foundation as you begin to develop how you're going to connect with God and learn from your rabbi so that you can be his shadow. Remember how he expresses himself to us as Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Remember the gift he's given you to converse back to him through prayer, but also to listen to him as you read and study the scriptures. You're literally sitting at the feet of your rabbi, growing in knowledge so you can become just like him.